Hello, I'm not going to be uh, before you again. I'm going to do this live and then I may take a break from you for a bit. I'm going to talk about development, mentoring, and vision. I was on earlier talking about toleration and faith and faith in everything. But I want to commend you. I want to commend those of you who watch and those of you who are in the midst of visionary shift things and moving into new areas of life. It takes a real commitment to do what you're doing. It takes a real commitment to do what you're doing. Now, I don't know the nature of the generation that we're in. I know there is a lot of greatness hidden in it. I know there is a lot of potential hidden within this generation. I know this generation is radically gifted and potent with creative power as it relates to poetry, speaking, music, hip hop, rap, teaching, philosophy, uh, technology. Hello everyone. Hello Cornell, Audrey, Darren, Wendy, Bridget, everyone who's on. There is so much hidden in the spirit and in the consciousness of this generation that it's crazy. And I know that we don't want a lot of this uh, potential perverted by religion or fear of failure or doubt. And I wanna commend you, I wanna commend those of you who have been developed in your life, who have embraced certain coaching or mentoring and have discovered where you're going. But, I, but I'm also at a loss of words because I really see that there are so many people with vision and desire, but they really despise the mentoring process and the expansion of thought, the consultation of vision, Everyone, well not everyone, most people have a desire to get somewhere without properly processing their thought and their life and discipline. And maybe I came up in a different time and I'm not just talking about church uh, discipline and I'm not against church, but I'm finding that this generation is brilliant, but the, but the mentoring and the accountability and the development of these things are really going by the wayside and I'm finding that a lot of people want to get somewhere tomorrow and they really despise the development of thought character and visionary truth. I think we're in a, 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 a world right now where knowledge and how to say something is better than becoming something. Everyone wants the opportunity to get into a platform to just say something, or we want a celebrity to find us and give us a check and make it easy. I think this breaking from visionary to becoming, and it's becoming very, very hard for people to embrace where they have no desire or value to get their life or, de or, or vision or thought process properly developed. I think most people have the heart to vent and what they want to do and what they wish would happen, but they lack the toleration and the gall and the capacity to submit to some sort of structured dynamic to uh, reconfigure their thoughts. And see, a lot of us are really incredible wealthy people, but we need a reconfiguration of value in order for that power to come. And most of us are gonna stay broke and most of us are gonna stay mere preachers because we have an idea, but the recalibration or the reconfiguration of our lives to cause this method and discipline to come, we choke at. Most of us want great things, but we don't value the method or the purpose of being developed in this vision in order for it to be really healthy and really 
really whole. So we're going to always live with a part-time job, doing vision as a hobby on the side until we're burnt out. Let me tell you something. There is no magic to what you want to do. There is no magic potion, quick prayer, book to read, take an information from one author and from another person and then re-spinning the information that you read from somebody else to go and reproduce something else. Most people's vision is a reproduction of somebody else's works. And I'm finding that most people are choking at the, at the process of authentic gifting and power. And that something needs to happen. And if it doesn't change, it's not God who's going to come down and do it. You know, I do a lot of these Facebook lives because I want to help inspire that inner authentic power that you have. So you can move forth. We've even established a Cairo Center here in Houston to help people in the discovery and recovery of their purpose. But I'm finding out right now that the process of reconfiguration and getting new thoughts and oh, it's, it's becoming a hard thing and people are succumbing at the heat and the burden of it. But yet we want God to use us with all of his glory. But I really believe that most people want an unaccountable glory some sort of gifting that will give them magic. And I'm here to tell you there is no such thing as magic when it comes to, excuse me, the phone drop, when it comes to walking in your fullness of purpose. So I want to ask you, I want to commend those of you who submitted to the burden of development. I, I commend you for being able to stand some people right now are finding it comfortable just to have new churches to go to, to sit down and maybe be on an auxiliary. Nothing wrong with it. Please, when I say this, I'm not talking about it, but I think there is an ease when it comes to development of purpose. I think you can't discover your true purpose if you're so addicted to the ease of living and the ease of non-thinking and the ease of non-exploration and the ease of non-curiosity. I don't think you'll ever discover or recover your purpose. I think the more that we maintain a financial ease and a, a mental ease that we're gonna always live working for somebody else, and being at the mercy of somebody else's benefit. There's gonna have to be some sort of recalibration of how you think. You're gonna have to undomesticize yourself and stop hiding. But you know, that's me. As That's me. The more you find yourself not able to tolerate moving forward in unfamiliar territory, you're going to always be a mama. You're going to always be a daddy. You're going to always just be working and paying the bills and dying. And then you're going to complain. But I'm telling you, if you constantly complain about where you are, there is no job that can remove you from a mental, spiritual funk. The only thing that could move you from a mental, spiritual funk is the discovery of a vision, not a hobby, but a vision. And when you have a mental, spiritual funk, you're going to have a dead end job that will help you tolerate the funk, a dead end religion that helps you tolerate the funk. You know what? I, I better uh, watch what I'm saying. I better keep saying the funk because I, before I slip. I'm serious. I'm finding people, it's very hard to listen to the stretching of thought. And in order to really be a disciple of vision, you're going to have to get over your mental convenience and mental inhibitions and funk and tiredness and, and everything to really be successful at this. Because if you don't, you're going to fail. You're going to 
You're not going to make it. You're going to live complaining, needing spiritual magic to come and deliver you. What prayer cloth can I buy? What amount of money can I put in the envelope and pay for a miracle from the prophet? And I'm like, it's, we are being taken advantage of because we are not taking advantage of our potential. And when you don't take advantage of yourself, you leave yourself at the mercy of all kind of slickness, whether in ministry or whatever, you leave yourself at a disadvantage because I'm afraid to think and carry out this thing and to, to follow and submit to some process that will create an authentic understanding of who I am and where I'm going. And it's like, that's becoming outdated now. Being gifted and wow, being powerfully full of potential yet rebellious. There is a, there is a industry, there is a genre for it now. For, for, for wild and gifted, for rebellious and talented. There is, a, there is a, a genre. People are being paid for it now. So the value of true understanding and, and, and leadership and understanding is slowly dying, I'm seeing. I'm seeing that leadership has become a dying breed now. It's only for the few. And maybe that's what Jesus said. This way is narrow. This power is, is a thing that so few will find. He said, broad is the way to destruction and convenience. He says, but narrow is the way to life. And I'm seeing now that this way is becoming more and more narrow by the day that people are falling by the wayside, not because of sin, but the laziness of life and the hunger for magic the laziness of real living and the hunger for some sort of spiritual magic. Every week, spiritual magic. Can I buy a book and take what you say and put a spin on it and get a platform without my words? What are your words? How many of you guys understand what I'm saying? I'm saying this because I don't know if I'm going to be back on soon. I don't know. But I'm saying this now, and it's not like me to do two Facebook lives in a day, but I'm saying it. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? Why? What are we impatient in? And that's something about life. I, I think that's the trick, not of the enemy, but life that to get us connected to to domestical living and hopelessness because we fear taking a jump into our life. So we have to dumb down. Some of us then had children and gotten relationships and it seems like we're financially obligated and domestically obligated to the point we can't dream because we have a child. I can't dream because I have a son. I can't dream because I have a little girl. I can't dream because I, I work. I can't dream because I go to school. I can't dream because I go. I can't dream because I got a car note. A lot of life is locking us in to the fear of dreaming to the point that we're addicted to watching reality shows of people who are doing great things and we feel it should be us. And the only thing we can do is cheer other people on TV while we go to work in the morning, while we shuffle through bills, while we're late on payments, late on mortgages, and late on rent, while we hope. And so we don't read anymore, and we don't buy anything anymore, because we feel that our vision has passed us by, and now we have to prepare for our kids and grandchildren so they can lead a better life. Before you know it, our vision is our grandchildren and our children, because our life has left us. How many of you understand what I'm saying? So the, uh, the need to be submissive and consistent in developing my vision and what is my hope it, it, it dies. Vision is dying in the belly of people who have no time. I've, how many of you understand what I'm saying by a show of hands? It seems like our vision is dying in the belly of people who have no time. They're dying in the, in the belly of people who are still looking at their exes and divorces and past and families and scared. Vision is dying. So it's, it's, it's like 
These words of power are becoming something irrelevant because they are not mixing in with domesticism. And it's like, give me a word. Some people are like, give me a word that mixes in with my domestic things. Let me feel great while I'm trapped in this prison of, of, of doubt and child support and, uh, and unemployment and, 